Welcome back to Horror Recaps. Today, I will be showing you a horror slash thriller from 2009 titled The Stepfather. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. At the beginning of the movie, a man is in a bathroom dyeing his hair. He shaves his beard and removes brown contacts from his bright blue eyes. The house is decorated with several Christmas decorations and pictures of his family. When he is out, we see that his luggage is packed. He goes downstairs, puts on some music, and calmly makes himself breakfast. We finally see the dead bodies of people lying across the house. The kitchen sink has many blooded tools. The man goes outside, gets in his car, and drives away. The dead bodies have been found by the police. They suspect the stepfather Grady Edwards to be the murderer. He is nowhere to be found since the incident. There have been similar cases of murder in the past, so the police suspect that Grady is a serial killer. His victims are mostly widowed or divorced single women with kids. But there is no evidence of Grady's existence. Throughout his stay with the family, he has not taken a single picture. Nor has he provided any useful information about his past. Even the police database has no information about him. However, they managed to get a sketch of him. Grady is shopping in a store when he meets Susan. She is a divorced housewife. She is in the store with Beth and Sean, her youngest two kids. When they talk, Grady introduces himself as David Harris whose wife and daughter had died recently. Although it is their first time meeting, Susan is charmed by him. She invites him to a restaurant with her kids. Only six months later, they are living together and engaged. Michael, Susan's eldest son, comes home from military school. Michael complains about his mom not coming to pick him up with his girlfriend Kelly. He does not like that Susan is moving too fast in the relationship. The family has organized a surprise party for Michael. Delighted, Susan hugs her son. Sean and Beth welcome him too. Michael meets David for the first time. Susan's sister Jackie is at the party too. She is glad that Michael likes David. David makes a toast saying that family is the greatest thing in the world. Jackie then offers David a job at her real estate company. Susan supports the idea because she wants to keep him close. David invites Michael into the basement to talk to him privately. David has added cabinets in there. All of which are locked. One of the cabinets contains a collection of tequila. He wishes to bond with Michael through alcohol. David knows Michael hates military school. Hence he offers him to be in his high school swimming club. After the party, Michael sees Kelly off. He doesn't have a license yet, so he asks her to come soon from her grandparents. Meanwhile, he notices David staring at them but doesn't think much of it. Later, Susan comes to talk to Michael privately. She tells him to try to get along with David because he means a lot to her. Michael is not comfortable talking about the topic. The next day, David gets Michael into the swimming club. Michael calls Kelly and tells her about the incident. Sean is in his room playing video games. Susan tells him to turn the volume down but he doesn't oblige. David then grabs him by the back of his neck to stop him. Sean is stunned. The next day David notices Kelly and Michael in the pool. According to him, them being so passionate at such a young age isn't right. But Susan dismisses his concern telling him not to be so old-fashioned. Sean looks unhappy during dinner. When Susan asks him if something is wrong, he tells her he is okay. The conversation changes to David's old family. Susan tells Michael about David's wife and daughter's death. Just then Susan's ex-husband Jay is at the door. The youngest kids are excited to see him. Michael is not very fond of Jay. Beth and Sean leave to spend the weekend with him. David invites Michael to have lunch the following day. The next morning, their neighbor, Mrs. Cutter, comes ringing the doorbell. She has come to inform her about the sketch of a serial killer who looks just like David. Susan finds it funny and dismisses it. Michael listens to their conversation but doesn't think much of it. At lunch, David asks Michael to be his best man. During the conversation, David accidentally calls his dead daughter two different names, Lisa and Michelle. Michael calls him out but David recovers saying that her middle name was Michelle. That day, Mrs. Cutter hears a doorbell. She goes to check but there's no one outside. She goes in again to check on her cat when David suddenly drags her and pushes her down the stairs. He pinches her nose and suffocates her to death. Later, Michael tells Kelly about David misnaming his daughter. According to her, Michael is thinking too much about the situation. They are in his room making out. Michael sees the door open and goes out to see David there. Kelly leaves after seeing him. At night, Jay brings Sean and Beth home. He lashes at David, accusing him of grabbing his son's neck. Michael calms Jay and brings him outside. Jay thanks Michael for calming him and apologizes for not being there for Michael when he needed him. They talk for a while and hug. David apologizes to Sean, but Susan is still mad at him. 
She tells him that physical force is not acceptable at all. Later at night, Michael wakes up to a text from Jay. He goes outside to hear David blabbering alone downstairs. David now works with Jackie in real estate. They have been paying him in cash, so she asks him to provide them his personal information. When he gets back home, he tells Susan that he wants to quit the job because it isn't what he thought it would be. Susan is going out that night. Sean and Michael are playing video games at a very high volume. Jay is at the door to visit his children before going on a trip for work. He also apologizes to David for his behavior last time. Upon Michael's request, Jay had done a background check on David and had found out that he lied about going to U of O. He wonders what other lies David had made up. Jay is a threat to David now. He hits him on his head with a vase. The boys are oblivious to the noise. Meanwhile, at the bar, Jackie tells Susan about her concerns about David. She finds it suspicious that the very day she asks for his information, he quits the job. Susan, however, dismisses her concern and tells her that she is looking too much into the situation. David's flawlessness blinds her. Meanwhile, at home, David takes Jay down to the basement and ties him. He puts a plastic bag over Jay's face to suffocate him to death. While he is at it, Michael comes out of the room to call Jay. He notices that David is in the basement but doesn't go there to check. After killing Jay, David sends Michael a text from his phone apologizing for not visiting. The following day, Mrs. Cutter's body is found. David asks the mailman what had happened to which he replies that she had died of a little accident. Michael overhears this conversation. However, while telling the story to Susan, he adds that Mrs. Cutter died by falling down the stairs. Michael is now sure that David had something to do with her death. Susan takes Sean and Beth to the dentist. David gets a call from Jackie telling him to submit the personal details because they still need them for some verifications. He then goes up to the attic to repair its floor. Michael tells Kelly about the incident in the morning, but Kelly thinks he is being overdramatic. David then leaves the house to pick up the other kids. Michael takes this chance to search through David's stuff to find evidence. Kelly helps him too. Susan calls David and tells him she will pick the kids up instead. Kelly and Michael hear David come home, but they are stuck. They somehow manage to get away before he notices them. Later, Michael looks through the computer to find Grady Edwards' sketch Mrs. Cutter was talking about. He shows it to Kelly the next day, but she still doesn't believe it. David is going through Jay's phone when he finds Jackie's voicemail. She wants to talk to Jay about David. Later that day, Susan goes out to drop the youngest kids at camp. Michael comes out of the shower to find David standing in front of him. He asks Michael about his plans for tonight and warns him about the storm. Michael is staying at Kelly's for the night. When Michael goes back to his room, he is surprised to see David has cleaned it. He quickly looks through his phone to see that the picture of David is gone. Later that night, David goes to Jackie's. She is about to leave for a trip to Vegas but stops to pull out an umbrella that had fallen into her pool. David stands behind her as she does that and kills her by drowning her in the pool. When he comes back, Susan and David are the only two people at the house. David plans to murder Susan. He sets out his tools and gives Susan a pill to help her sleep. Michael and Kelly are in the car outside. He plans to sneak into the basement to look for evidence to back his claims. He tells Kelly to call him if there is any movement in the house. He then enters the basement by breaking the skylight. Michael breaks the locks of the cabinet and opens them to a bag with his father's initials on it. David had hidden it the night he killed Jay. Just then, Michael notices a freezer in a corner. Kelly sees David move around the house through the windows and calls Michael. But his phone drops and breaks. When he doesn't pick up the call, she runs to the basement skylight he went in through. Michael finds his father's body in a plastic bag inside the freezer. He is startled. David finds Kelly in their front yard trying to call Michael. He punches her unconscious. David then blocks the skylight with a stone. Now, there is no way for Michael to escape. David then drags Kelly to the kitchen and starts preparing knives and weapons for his kill. Susan wakes up and comes there. David maniacally tells her that this is not going to work because of Michael. He questions her parenting skills and says that he thought she could be Mrs. Grady Edwards. Susan is confused by the statement when David grimaces and asks, Who am I here? Susan calls him by his name, which reminds him that his name is David Harris. Kelly moves on the floor, and Susan notices her. But before she can help her, David chases her with a knife. She hides in the bathroom. David breaks down the door dot but Susan manages to stab him with a broken piece of a mirror before he can attack her. Michael breaks the basement door and escapes. Michael, Kelly, and Susan reunite, but David comes after them again. They try to hide in the attic, but David follows them there too. David and Michael are fighting when the floor beneath Michael breaks, and he falls through it. 
Kelly finds an electric saw in the corner and threatens David with it. But the floor beneath her breaks too. Kelly, along with Susan, falls through it. Michael leaps onto David, making them both fall on the roof. They fight there for a while when David pulls Michael down to the concrete floor with him. They both lie unconscious there. After a month, Michael wakes up in a hospital bed. He has been in a coma the whole time. He asks Susan about David. He had fled from the house after they fell down. No one has seen him ever since. The movie ends as we see David in a grocery store. His appearance is fully changed. He introduces himself as Chris Ames to a woman with two kids. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.